definitive investigation on proxy wars of South Asia, Troubled Periphery, the Crisis of Northeast. He has also worked for Times and Reuters, and before that for the Press Trust of India and the Kolkata-based Anandu Bazaar Mr. Bhomik has worked for 17 years as BBC East India correspondent and is now a senior editor with Mamua TV in Kolkata. Mr. Bhomik, a renowned personality, a good journalist, a good teacher, a successful editor, and above all, a good human being. And we are really happy to have him here to share his experience and speak on the theme Media and Conflict with reference to the Northeast experience. So, may I now request Honorable Sir Bhomik to come up on the stage and speak a few words. Respected uh, friends on the dais, Pramoda, Shurita, all my good friends, Sanjeev Dab, and dear students, um, what I'm supposed to speak on today is media in conflicts, the Northeast experience. And, but what I will try to do is not just to speak. My, my lecture is not going to be a narrative. I'll speak with certain themes in mind, and I'll use my rather rich experience, spanning over 32 years as a journalist, to actually build on my themes and reinforce my key arguments. I would like to actually remind the, remind the assembly here that I'm no longer with the BBC. I left the BBC in the month of April this year under very tense circumstances because the BBC decided to close down the entire Hindi service. I'll just say one little thing about the newspaper I'm trying to do which is, we are going in for a hyper-regional paper. I have no pretensions, I have no intention to do a national media. Because I think national media is neither national nor media. It's metro media. Somebody comes out with a paper from Delhi or Calcutta, doesn't make them national. We're as much a part of this nation, and if people don't think we are, it's their problem and not ours. We are going in for a hyper-regional paper, but with a great broad outlook and there are certain new things that we are going to do in our paper is that we will carry a separate page on the neighborhood very often there are things in the neighborhood that happens which affects us in the northeast yeah so we will have a separate page which will just cover bangladesh burma nepal bhutan china and perhaps a little more into southeast asia why now, do you realize something? Assam had had the most peaceful elections in recent years, in which the Congress came out victorious, but I'm not interested about the result. This is the first time since 1991 that the Alpha could not influence an election. Otherwise, whenever they have backed a party since 91, that party has come to power. And that's a fact of life. Why? Who gets the credit for this? The man in this pool? No. The credit goes to Sheikh Hasina. In the last three or four months, she has decimated the Alpha. Alpha is today without money because something like 3,000 crores worth their funds, which was parked in 42 bank accounts in the Sonali Bank, have been seized. Almost all the senior leaders except Paris would have been picked up, handed back to India. It's a different thing that these people have had to go into these talks under considerable pressure and I don't want to get into that debate because that is something I argued out with a lot of people like Professor Hiren Gwai. You know, I believe that this whole process is about splitting the Alpha and not about bringing peace to a sand. And the crooks in Delhi, and I use that language extremely consciously, are playing an entirely different game which goes totally contrary to the aspirations for peace that we genuinely have in this region after nearly 25 years of conflict. But to cut a long story short, the reason we are going is we are going to have this region page. We are going to have one whole page of the cities, but not just Guwahati, metros. But we are going to have one whole page on the rest of Assam, one whole page on the rest of Northeast. Maybe two whole pages later as we spread out. Yeah? And, um, you know, our supplement. I am one editor who is not going to put Bollywood heroines on my supplement. Yeah? 
I am going to have a proper literary supplement. The idea, of course, comes from the best edited paper in this region, Ananda Vajar Patrika. If you look at Ananda Vajar Patrika's Rovi Studio, it's mostly creative writing. And I'm going to do that because the Northeast in the last few years has blossomed. A lot of writers have blossomed. Some of them write directly in English. Many people outside Assam actually write in English. It's only in Assam and Tripura and partly in Manipur. People write in vernacular, but in vernacular, the vernacular literature, we're going to have it translated. This supplement, almost three pages of that, is going to showcase the original creative writing of this feature. And the rest of it, yes, we'll have a beauty corner. Those of you who think you're interested are welcome, but no Bollywood, Hollywood dresses, okay? Traditional costumes. I want to showcase the beauty of this region, the beauty of our sisters and brothers, but in our own regional costume. And I, mean, I don't hesitate to say I'm an extremely regional person. I'm not a part of the national elite. I don't want to be one. I don't want to be Mr. Arnav Goswami or go to Delhi and try to be more Indian than actual Indians out there in Delhi. I have no pretensions. I, I belong to this region. I'm extremely proud of it. As Sharad Bosch has said, I believe in that vision of India, which was articulated partly by Shubhar Bosch and then more by his brother Sharad Bosch, who lived longer, that the future India of my dream is that of an overarching civilization state in which politically we will have a collection of republics. But at the level of thinking and attitude, we will be one. It's a state which will be sustained by consensus and not by the guns of the Indian Army, not by the Armed Forces Special Powers Act. It's something that will be sustained by consensus. But without getting into all these philosophical questions, I'll return to my subject rather quickly and I'll try to make five important points. And that's how I go about doing it. I'll make five important points and then with my rich experience in this region, and I can I can tell you one thing, there are better writers than me in my profession in this region. My good old friend Utpal Bordoli, any day he writes a better copy than me, but it's because of his inconsistency that he has gone out of the profession. There are others who are erudite, but I can tell you one thing for sure, nobody has a set of more powerful legs than I have. I've actually physically walked 250 kilometers in six days to go into rebel bases inside Burma where the Naga rebels and the Alpha and the Manipuris were based in the good old days in 1986 to do one single cover story in the Sunday magazine which used to be edited by M.G. Anwar until it of course folded up um, you know, in the late 90s. Just one cover story, 250 kilometers up and down. Most people won't survive that kind of a trek. Yeah? There's one more boy who's now working with me but done something like that, not as far as I have gone. Shomil Purogas, he's a Bengali, but he's more Naga than Bengali. This is a Dimapur boy, and therefore he can make that track, you know. And I had to go without a cameraman, because I worked for this Calcutta group, Ananda Bazar group, of which Sunday was a part, and there was no cameraman who could take this physical load. So I can tell you one thing for sure, I'm much more experienced than most people, in the sense, not just in terms of years, but in terms of diversity, variety of assignment stuff, and the sheer physical load that I've taken, especially by, because I've actually gone into Burma without a passport, without a visa, 27 times, and every time I've come back. And the thing is, the Burmese army is not famous for taking prisoners. It's famous for shooting them. So if you get caught, you're up there, no longer here in Mother Earth. The first point that I realized as I came into this profession, you know I hailed from Tripura, where the newspaper industry is totally dominated by the Bengali settlers, and that's a bit of a problem. The tribals were the indigenous people, the son of the soils. Their demographic preponderance has changed in the 25 to 30 years after independence. They were never a decisive majority though. Even before independence, the tribals were about 55% of the population. And the Bengalis were about 45%. The reason for that was that the kings of Tripura, the only imperial force in Northeast, 
who actually conquered a lot of area into Eastern Bengal at various points of time in history. Their armies actually defeated the armies of the Bengal Sultan and one recent inscription found uh, near Dhaka dates back to 1207, the reign of King Vijay Manik. This is a Tripura inscription. It proves that the kings of Tripura, that the king of Tripura Vijay Manik had actually even Dhaka under his control. And therefore, this whole stretch that, that lies between Dhaka and Chittagong on the one hand and the present state of Tripura, which is basically Hill State, was at various points of time conquered by the kings of Tripura and therefore the subjects were Bengals. And we hail from something like that of a place. I hail from a, my ancestors hail from a village in Chakla Roshanabad, which was the zamindari of the king of Tripura. And after the British came and started and captured Bengal, the status of the king of Tripura out there became that of a zamindar who would pay tax to the British. Whereas the hill state of Tripura remained an independent princely state. But do you know three fourths of the revenues of the king of Tripura actually came from Chakla Roshanabad? And the famous singer of Tripura, Swachindev Borman, actually married into a family which hails from one of the villages of Chakla Roshanabad called Kalikoch. His wife, Mira Dev Borman, is the is the elder sister of the famous Bengali editor who is to edit the statesman and then went on to edit New, uh, New Straight Times in Singapore, Shunanda Kumar Bhattara. That's the links. So Tripura always had a huge link with Bengal because their kings had physically conquered these areas. And therefore, when I would have a problem in Calcutta with the Babus over the last few years, I would tell them, don't forget that. But the point that I'm trying to make is that after the partition, when all these areas, which were actually areas of the king of Tripura, but they went into a state called Pakistan, which came into existence on the basis of a religion, the Bengali Hindus there, whose perception was, it's very different from the migration that's taking place in Assam. Tripura's migration was essentially these people who felt that they are the proja of the king of Tripura, the subjects of the king of Tripura, and in times of dire straits, they, where else will they go? They will have to come to Tripura. So this whole flow of population altered Tripura's demography, and in a matter of 25 years, the Bengalis became about 73% of Tripura's population. Now there are old Bengali families who have lived in Agartala. My grandfather was a chief of the royal bodyguards. I see myself as a Tripura, I see myself as a son of the soil. As much a son of the soil as any tribal. But the point is that the settlers who came after the 50s, you know, had a problem identifying themselves. And, and therefore, and as they took control of the economy, as they took control of most of the other levers of social and political power, the tribals felt very upset and many of them took to insurgency. The point I'm trying to make here is that in 1980, Tripura encountered the first major ethnic riot, almost, almost 33 years after it became a part of the Indian Republic. And in these riots initially, it was the Bengalis who were affected because this riot was started by some of the tribal organizations which felt very upset about certain things, lack of autonomy and stuff like that. But at the end, because the Bengalis controlled police, they controlled the media, it was a one-sided affair. They suffered very badly and their sufferings were hardly reflected in the newspapers that were published from Tripura. It's at that point of time that I left my secure college job in a government college, you know, and came into, the, came into journalism to work with a local paper who was paying me at least 300 rupees less. I took that risk, calculated risk. And one of the first things I did was I went and had a fight with my editor. Now I had this problem right from my days in the Rashtra Indian Military College, where actually I screwed up my military career after beating up my instructor because he was positively racist. And I don't want to describe that story here because it will be a sheer waste of time. The point is, 
had this problem with the editor and told him that the paper is not going to be able to write the title of the paper. And you know what he told me? He just said, I was stuck here for a target in the paper. Who reads your paper? Think of that. So I said, okay, are we going to be totally dictated by the market or by our perception of truth? And this is a fight I had with him for almost six months as I desperately tried to change the balance of the newspaper. I got many stories that I wanted to, but not always. And then I finally came to a sand. In one of my trips, you know, because my editor in Tripura sent me, because I had been coming to Assam in the late 70s because my Moha was the general manager of the Northern Frontier Railway and my brothers were footballers. One of them went to go, Ramuda knows him, where they played for East Bengal later, Shopun I used to come to them and they said, Dada, Amanda, Sade, Cholo. So I used to, I would go and play football with the Ulubari Sporting. He was a reasonably good footballer. Again, the power of legs. I had more punch than dribble. And I've scored a goal against Orish Borwai. He still remembers that from a distance of 40 years. The reason is that he was a restless man even at that time. And would very often leave the crossbar and come out right up to the D, trying to instruct other players, hey, fella, jabi, hey, fella, jabi, and that kind of thing. And I noticed this man doing this again and again. And I had the power of my legs, a long, deeper kick, which he tried to recover and could not get. And he still remembers that. Anyway, jokes apart, and at that point I came to a sign. The key thing that I realized, and in 1979, I actually had this experience which many people had had at that time because of the spirit of the agitation. If you remember the Bordeaux Roy Trophy match, I'm a compulsive football freak. And I went to see that finals, the great finals of the Bordeaux Roy Trophy, at the peak of the agitation, East Bengal playing Thailand Port Authority. For the first half, 45 minutes, the great coach of East Bengal, PK Banerjee, failed to realize why I'm playing in my own country and everyone is against me, if you remember. And East Bengal took in two goals. It was a fantastic team that East Bengal had, but Dugal Thai. It's only in the half time when Kodita turned to some of his local friends and they told him Andalo on these dynamics. And then he of course went and he's known for the famous vocal tonic. And he gave his players a great vocal tonic, you know, Bangali Rijjot Pijjot and all that stuff that he's famous for. East Bengal came back into the field like a team possessed. They scored four goals, they won the trophy, they could not carry that trophy back to Calcutta because of the, the atmosphere in the field. I was in the field that day and I had had some experience. And I don't want to describe that. And anybody else, his view of Assam would have been colored by that experience. But I am a rather objective person. At the risk of beating my own drum, I would say that. So I went back home to my Maha and everyone was very surcharged. I said to myself, I argued with my brothers, and I said, why do I support East Bengal? What is East Bengal? Is it just football? I, can, I could be supporting three other football clubs. Why do you support East Bengal? It's got something to do with my identity, my East Bengali roots. If I am so passionate about this identity, uh, several, several years after the partition, the Assamese has a right to be passionate about his own identity, and he has a right to feel threatened. In view of the Tripura experience, the Assamese has a bona fide right to feel threatened by the slow but steady process of demographic change. And this objectivity stood me in good stead. As I came to Assam, I went, I had a look at a paper in the morning in the railway station. I said, this looks like a good paper. It's not the Assam Tribune. Sorry, Pramoda, but the Assam Tribune, maybe the most read paper in, in this state where it's not certainly the best produced and the most inspiring. I hope you'll agree with that. So new stuff, it just come. Dr. Urwa publishing, good paper, well done. I said, hey, to come. Malik, Sri Guru. So I went to Maligon and I got an appointment with R. N. Dr. Urwa, who was the editor. Uh, after some difficulty with the chaprasis and the bearers and the secretaries and all that intermediate stuff. And I sort of job with him. I saw his appointment, 
I interviewed him for my own story for the Tripura paper. Then he asked me certain things and he got interested in me. And then he asked me, would you like to come to a Sam I said, why not? I'd love to. No, no, but are you aware of the circumstances? I said, yeah, but I'm a, I think I'll be a professional. This is the time to be in Assam. Big agitation. The biggest mass agitation since the death of Gandhi. Why not? He said, I'll have a desk for Thakke Bola. He said, hey, you're not going to be a teacher. He said, what do you think? East Bengali manu akhamiya hika pondro dinar kham. Why? Bengali tami kha hita maar prayajan. Akhamiya ki kha? More to lag. I mean, East Bengali manu ki kha? Amar hita maar. The syntax is closer to Assamese than to the great polished Bengali of Nodhiya and Shanti. You know, proximity has its own sort of dynamics. Yeah? Geographical proximity has its own dynamics. So I told the Thora, I reassured him, of this hita na guru pondro bish din, I got him a question, what happened to football Kelly as a new friend? I said, we see the end of life. With some nervousness, but with a little bit of hope, he took me into the newspaper. And within about 15 days, I had made friends with good, great friends with the late Grigo Fukon, who used to always take me to the Paradise Restaurant, which was then a very small one, and that kind of thing. And believe me, for the rest of my period covering the Assam education, finally, the Alpha and all that, I've never had a problem in Assam. And a lot of people don't believe me. The reason is objective. And this brings me to the key point that I'm going to make when media is in conflict. What you need to do if you're a journalist covering a conflict. The first and the foremost requirement, and students, please take a note, because this is something original. You will not find it in any textbook. This is my own thesis. Okay? I'll of course leave your paper that I've written on this subject, not some some time back, in a book called Media in Conflict: The Asian Experience, where I've written about my own stuff. It was edited by India's best photojournalist at that point of time, who is now a professor of mass communication in Singapore, Nanyang Technological University, Shan Tekwani. Is that you have to rise above your identity value. So if my identity as a Bengali and my experience in that Bodoloi trophy had colored my vision of Assam, I would have been reporting like many other reporters who come here and think this is a hostile place. You have to rise above the identity thing. This is the first and perhaps the biggest challenge. And in Assam later, when I came for a longer spell later, when I helped some newspapers like Northeast Times, if you remember the Northeast Times had a multi lingual kind of a newsroom. I set it up for them. I ensure that people from different communities were there. And there's a practical side to it. The proof of that, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. I got this benefit of this whole thing. A, you build up a multi kind of a multi multicultural character of the newsroom, but then there was riots between the boroughs and the immigrant Muslims in Western Assam in the 1990s. If I had said, one of the reporters was my favorite, he came from my home state, his father was a judge in the Guwahati High Court, Mr. S. M. Ali, his son, Sayyid Liyakat Ali. He now practices in the New York Bar, yeah, because he's left journalism, gone and done his LLM, and has got the membership of the New York Bar. He's gone places, but I tell you, he's one of the best legal reporters in the country at that point of time. He started his career with me here, I guided it was in the Northeast Times. If on the morning of these riots, there was a decision to send Liakar to Western Assam, I said, I'll send Liakar but to the immigrant areas. If I send him to the Bodo areas, his press card, where his identity is clearly written, will be a cause of his death. The marauding mobs don't, you know, they just go by your identity. So you have to care. But who I am going to send there? Well, I didn't have a Bodo reporter in my newsroom. I hope I had one. But I thought the areas which are affected, there's a strong Bodo Christian population. I had a boy called Martin. He's from South. He's a Kerala Christian. I said, Martin, Kongla side, you practical stuff. That's how 
you deploy your newsman because no story is worth a dead body. And I don't, as a senior manager, I have to take care of that. So what I'm trying to say, but at a professional level, when these people come back, they have to rise above the identity barrier and they have to write objectively. If they don't do that, they are doing a disservice. So one of the key things, for those of you who are in this profession, please try to make this a point that when you are reporting, when you are producing a paper, please try to make a conscious effort to rise above the identity barrier, behave like a journalist, behave objectively, try to go for the truth to the best of your knowledge and ability. Sometimes you may not be able to find the truth, but you will try. Yeah? And you will rise above your identity barrier. This is the most crucial thing for someone in media of country. And I'll give you one simple example. In the 1980s, Britain went to war with Argentina over the Falkland Islands. The BBC decided that they will send one, those days no television, okay? At least BBC had no television. It was a radio service, but it was highly popular across the world. And they decided to send a full BBC radio team to cover the war from the Argentine side. So some journalists would go with the British Navy and the Army, some will go. So they approached the Argentine embassy in London and they said, we want to send it. Oh, but then it's difficult, you're British. Yeah, we are British, but we are journalists, man. We're going to cover the war also from the Argentine side. And please note, we want an appointment with your president. Well, our president is the enemy of Britain. Doesn't matter, enemy of Britain. Margaret Thatcher will take care of that. We want to interview him. And Margaret Thatcher, believe me, didn't like that. She said, these Oxbridge rascals who run the BBC, liberal guys, they operate on the taxpayers' money in Britain, and they are going to give coverage to the enemy. And Margaret Thatcher was so upset with the BBC's coverage because she found that there was a 14-minute interview of Juan Gualtieri. Juan Gualtieri was the Argentine president. She said, how the hell are you giving 14 minutes to the president of an enemy country? And Sir John Tusa, who was at that point of time the BBC's chief, said, Maggie Thatcher is better running the country. We are better running the radio station because we know each other. We know exactly what we're doing. We are a global service and we live up to the standards. The BBC is to broadcast in 44 languages in radio, four languages in television, almost 18 languages on the internet. We are not a British. Okay, we are funded by the British tax. We're fine. But we are for all intent and purpose a global broadcasting service. And the best evidence of that is the BBC's Canteen, where at any point of time you will find something like 30 to 40 dishes stretching across the globe. So, my favorite was, of course, the Ishmeel kebab, which used to be cooked by a Moroccan chef called Ali. He was my favorite when I went to the BBC for training. And I used to go to the canteen for lunch. Ishmeel kebab is something I've done truly global in, in its ethos. And that brings us to the core problem, is that people, is that a couple of years back, Mark Leighton, he was the BBC's NATO correspondent. And if you remember, the NATO forces were involved in Kosovo, okay, in a peacekeeping role and in a controversial peacekeeping role. Mark Leighton made a mistake. He was British and he thought that the British troops were his own. So in a PTC, he just told his camera, he just faced the camera like this, and he said, our troops, and they were in the background, some British troops walking back, had a very tough day, they faced three ambushes, and they lost about 17 people, blah, blah, blah. In about something like, when his story, when his thing was up on television, in something like an hour, just under an hour, he had something like 47 mails from fellow colleagues across the world in various BBC bureaus, many of them in London. How dare you say our troops? Say British troops! 
Why are you identifying yourself with the cause of the British Army? You're a BBC journalist. Now that is the extent to which the BBC would go. And therefore, throughout the various wars in the Middle East, when American networks were totally out, rightly identified with the Western cause, the BBC, A, because it had Persian and Arabic services, and because it made a conscious effort to position itself in a balanced and an impartial position, it retained the kind of credibility it has. So, rising above the identity barrier is such a key objective for any journalist, any media covering conflict, because that gets you the credibility. Now, without credibility, do you realize something in media? What is power? You're not a politician. You can't order big projects. You can't order the arrest of somebody. What is your power? Your credibility is your power. So long as you have credibility, so long as people believe you, and a lot and a lot of people believe you, that's the source of your power. <laughs> you have to rise above the identity barrier because that's crucial to the credibility of your entire media operation. The second thing that you need to do is, and this follows from this, is that you have to have a widest network of sources, widest, most diverse network of sources. And the reason for that is that if you don't have a wide network of sources within one community, you have one type of sources, you'll get always one-sided news. If you're calling up just one minister, if you're only calling up Okil Gogoi, you'll get a perspective from the people's movement side. If you're only calling up Mr. Bishwar Sarma, you'll only get the Congress perspective. What you really need to do is to call up both, get their views, and then write it in a way in which you are seen as balanced, but receptive. But perceptive. You give your perspective so that the reader understands. Don't think that the readers are fools. If you are biased, they'll find out. Hey, Omukta Omuk Montre de Pocket or one. Oh, credibility is gone. Nobody takes you seriously. There are many media operations these days which are owned by politicians. You think they have credibility? Nobody takes them seriously. And therefore, despite all the money that they have spent, ill gotten money, I, am, I would hazard to say, they don't have the kind of response that you need to get. And there are people who run credible operations with much less money and who have the respect and the audience for all for, to witness their operations. So you need a very diverse variety and the widest possible network of sources. And it's something like this. If you have a wide circle of acquaintances, or each of manu, that's actually the required, that we took issue on my friends. This is the circle of acquaintance. There will be a smaller circle inside which is a circle of friends or people with a good relation. And a still smaller circle of sources. But if you have met only five people, you're likely to have just about two sources who will feed you information. If you have 100 people that you know, you're likely to have 30, 40 people who may be feeding you information. You need to carefully evaluate them. Otherwise, there are people who try to plant stories on you. Okay, and I'm coming to that in a moment when I discuss, when I discuss the, the, the phenomena of psyops and force multipliers. I'll talk about that later. But if you have to carefully evaluate. I still evaluate my sources. I have detailed notes. Hey, man, to go to Mosorov. Kiman story to say. One story to credible. One story to importance. Kiman. And then I grade them. A plus. A. It's exactly like an intelligence officer. He grades his sources. Okay? And as far as news gathering is concerned, the, the way I do it, the way I evaluate my source is exactly like that of an intelligence officer. What is the difference? The difference is I go public, 
he doesn't go public, he reports to the government. I am supposed to play a straight game by representing the situation on ground. Intelligence often play games because they are guided by his master's choice as well as his master's voice. Both his master's choice and his master's voice. Now that, therefore, is the key thing. And in journalism, you have the widest possible network of contact, both in terms of diversity, in terms of variety. You need to have scientists, you need to know people from the fields of art, music, politicians, student leaders, movements, what have you, everything under the sun. And please don't forget, don't ignore the small man. If you're really getting into the business of hard journalism, not this nonsense page three kind of stuff that Times of India culture has promoted, you're getting into hard journalism. And if you realize it's hard journalism what people are looking for, do you recollect the Tehelka tapes? Bangaru Lakshman taking 1 lakh rupees. Was it done very properly? It was not done very properly. It's a spy cam operation first time. And it was just about clear that it's Mr. Lakshman and he's taking 1 lakh rupees. How and why did all networks in this country run that tape hour after hour after hour? Because that's what people wanted to see. These are not people like me who are crusaders or something. These are hard-nosed businessmen who only understand TRP. They knew, ye tape chalayega the TRP, paanch se gyara paanch jayega char ghante ki. Is liye ye tape ko chala. So which means what? Which means, to use a Marxist term, forgive me, don't think because I'm regularly a Marxist. I have serious problems with people who practice Marxism in this country. But I tell you, I would go back to Lenin where it said, imperialism is the highest form of capitalism. I would rather say that investigative journalism is the highest form of journalism. That's what people want. They don't want this rubbish page three stuff, you know. I mean, some of them do want Salman Khan running away with Falana, heroin and all that. And after a while, there is a saturation you don't want. And who all wants this? People who are sort of okay in life, okay. They don't have any problem, any crisis in their life, so they are very bothered about what Salman Khan is doing with his next hero. And people who have a crisis are interested why they are not getting water in the city in spite of the fact that this city is just right next to the biggest river in this country which has the highest volume of water. It's a very masculine river. So in my paper, we're going to do this, the big water crisis. We're going to screw the, screw the daylights of the authorities, I promise you. We're investigating all of You know, this whole city has grown after Big Bazaar. There is no water really, there is no water supply, there is no backup. How can there be an urban expansion like this? And why the hell a new water project that's coming into the city, going to Jalukbari, just because of public health engineering minister, that's his constituency? You have allowed the city to grow, you have given building permission. What about public water supply? What, what about GMC water? Why not? These are bread and butter issues people are interested in. So that brings us to the fact that apart from having a diverse base of sources, you also need to represent diverse interests in your coverage. Not just the interests of a couple of ministers, or a couple of political parties, or a couple of important persons, a couple of business groups. Uh, you will realize that the circulation of the Bengali newspapers and the Bengali TV channels, audio rate and TRP ratings, rose very sharply in the last two years in West Bengal. You know the reason? All closely, thoroughly, sincerely covered the movement of Ms. Mamata Banerjee about Shingur and Nandi Now, without being political, many of them were political somewhat because they were very anti-GPM, 
But many of them thought that they have to cover people's issue. And the people of Bengal were pissed off, absolutely pissed off after three decades of communist rule because they could not accept a situation in which a left government, which is supposed to be a pro government government, their police will open fire on unarmed, innocent peasants. Dukia, Kheti Kora, Manu, Jai Vilak, Bare, Bare Communist Party, Gurai, Gurai, must not go. I say, Tar Police, Hey Vilak or Gulia, he goes for Dota Manu Maridiba, Bengal or Manu Jeriko to Mani Lua, Nai, Tris Bosser Communist to support the officer Kedise, Teneko Bengal or Media to Buzi by say, you will have to stay with the people, otherwise, people will not read us. They will throw us out. They will just say, Kagos Lagi and Kalkati, they will jump. Finish. So they supported this. Even the Buddhijivi Sreni of Bengal, most of them are pro left. You have to accept that. Huh? I have seen people like Koshik Shen, one of our top theater personality, three generation Communist Party members. He told me, Degwe, I'm on my red card to Degwe. That chap has gone against Buddha. Why? They all resigned from the Natok Academy because Buddha Babu. Is personally a playwright, Nato Gleja Teket, Chief Minister, and that Nato Academy was all his friends. And he said, Vam Ponti Hoye Apnar Police, Bishop Airport, Guli Chalavi. Opponent has said, and everyone has gone against the entire Buddhi, except two persons, they have personal reasons. Swamitra Chatterjee, the famous film star, and Shunil Gandhi, they have personal reasons to be very close to Buddha. Everyone else has gone against And this is the reason that the tide swung so decisively against the communists. Otherwise, believe me, they have the very best election machinery in this country. It's like any military organization. That's how it operates. So the thing is, what did the media do? It represents the aspirations of the people. But here, the point I'm trying to make is that you must have a diverse source base, you must also have diverse interests, and you should generally try to identify with the aspirations of the people unless that aspiration is very parochial and reactive. The third point that I try to make, and I'll make only one more before I finish, is about this whole dilemma of whether you get it first or you get it right. Breaking news. He breaking news. breaking news. ہاشتہ दो लाख पच्चीस हजार किलोमीटर का एरिया है कम से कम एक बंदा तो यहाँ रखो और अगर नहीं रखते हो क्योंकि गुवाहाटी टीआरपी सिटी नहीं है तो फिर कृपया भारत माता की जय बोलने पर हमें मजबूर मत करो सिंपल इस तरह इट्स ऑल एट टू एक्सट्रा इट्स ऑल एट टू एक्सट्रा अन्ना आजा बुलुस तो सर्मिला ईमान दिन डरी कर Lack of balance. I'm a scoop like I'm a breaking news like Mark Tully, Sir Mark Tully, who was very long time the bureau chief of the BBC in India, is my guru. He recruited me, he taught me audiovisual journalism. He was a print journalist, I had no idea of radio and television, and he taught me. He took me under his wings and he, you know, you know he speaks Hindi. I saw nahi, I saw pakad nahi, I saw. This man. He used to tell me one very simple Subair, it's very important to get it first, but it's equally important to get it right. Perhaps more important to get it right. So in the name of school, there are people in Assam who have written stories, Hati Manu Khaimis, Namnapur Dhamar, foreign media players. Yon, Baga Kenika sensational to the le, Baga Fata Fat story to Loy Lava, Aru. एक हजार डॉलर जेटो आमी पाँच स्टोरी कारणे ऐसे स्ट्रिंगर आई लगे हाथी मानु खाये सो आँखों में टोमेटो ग्रोवर स्पीड साइड करेस एंड सो मेनी आदत ही वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट पी फाइलिंग फॉर 
foreign agencies on this. Absolute lies. There are people I've seen sitting in Calcutta, huh? telegraph or debate, that they telegraph so correspondent Mati Loija, Tan Puya said, Yate, no operation Bojurum started. Hare Kio, the Kolikada telegraph or boss toss profession. Hare Homo, Tumiki Jante had over operation as a school over to telegraph debate for the Tulas. It must be covered. Ah, in the Luna, I'll cover it from here. Fine, you cover it from Calcutta. I've done several Northeast stories from Calcutta, at least on the day one. But be honest to put the date line of Calcutta. Don't put Lokibada date line and don't say Indian tanks rolled into Lokibada. Why? A. He does not know the difference between tanks and armored personal carrier. Armored personal carrier also at the chain, which goes in, it's an anti mine thing. Indian Army, how is the Alpha mine sign? Look, I said, and Alpha Tat, LTT, Manu, I said, were expert in mines. No, and that report was right. Later on, we know that a chap called Rajan had visited because after Paripura had met Prabhakaran and Prabhakaran had put him in touch with some arms dealers in Southeast Asia. Forest requested some help and Forest, and he sent a chap called Rajan, Alpha based a side with a little report. They will have key insurgency going to Indian Army and against her, equipment. They don't have the minimum professionalism, camp guarding her. Anyway, I don't want to get into that. But this great journalist, and I don't want to name him, because at a personal level he's a friend, but at a professional level I abuse him every other day. He wrote in the telegraph that Indian tanks have rolled into Lokipa. Are Likhi Likhi? Loki Bhadar Dateline. He is sitting in Calcutta, he writes Loki Bhadar Dateline. Indian tanks roll into Loki Bhadar. Buji Apana ji tank no hai to armored personal carrier. Then Alpha Jeneko force tarik is to tank no hai. Honestly speaking, Indian Army, whatever you may think of it, it does not need tanks against the Alpha. Okay? It is not such a strong outfit. A tank fire for our risky villager mount body collateral damage over. Armored personal carrier and chain type or the vehicle put thake. So that if there is a mine blast, they are protected. They don't have it. Three months later, in a party at the headquarters of the Four Corps, as I said, I studied in RIMC. Many of my friends are in the army. General Balji, he was the chief of staff, not the corps commander, the chief of staff. This same journalist, such a fool. He goes up and says, Sir, we have a little lucky about this. We have a visit. And he said, Sir, we have a visit. He said, Sir, we have a visit. He said, Gentlemen, who are you? He said, I am such and such from the telegram. And the first thing General Balji, he is a Sardar Ji, he has got a foul tongue. First thing he said, He said, You were first there. You were there. And you were our tank too. He said, You were our tank too. And then, in the filthiest of languages, he said, Tumare jaise correspondence loko, abhi mujhe pithu dene ko ji cha nai. Thoda pauch ke baare mein pehle pada karo, aur thoda bhaag dor karo, sir pada chale. And then, Balji turned to me. I was also having my drink, he said, Subir Bhomi, yehi operation ke time mein, pehla paanj din, hamare saath tha. 73rd Brigade Jorah, five days I went around with the army. Army can go ex-servicemen network to use because who knew him like like I'm more popular most of it, you know. But actually Indian army log up, jacket, jacket, pinning. Past the Akhamar dance for you. The Bajram to failure is it. Indian army professional organization. Right now, our general Jamil Mahmood clearly what he said. Every person that goes into an assembly village must have an assembly speaking. This is how I manage. Secondly, a complete list of the in the district ex service. The ex service and key was to get one of some regiment of Havildar Gogoy as a lady retired when I said, Omuk Gaunt as a outpost commander knows in Mary's jurisdiction of Farane government, a Havildar, some Gogoy is there, he was got her cup of time. He goes into the village with 20 guys and says, Havildar Gogoy, and this man comes up. I am a Indian army department in Congress, a senior officer, and I am a senior officer. And all these people, when they leave the army, they feel a vacuum. This is psychology. I have seen it with my father. My father was an Air Force man. 
सिविल रिटायर्ड जैसे अरे यार कैसे दिन गुजार रहे हो मुक्तो द दिस मैन वाज यूज्ड फर्स्ट टू लियाजो विद द विलेजर्स सो राइनो टीमन रोजर वन इज नॉट ह्यूमन राइट्स एट्रोसिटी वन है नंबर 2 अच्छा यार यहां हम कैंटीन शंटीन लगा देंगे सो चीप प्रोडक्ट्स तो पब्लिक रिलेशंस और गार्डन तक यूज को ऐसे रात ही अकोमन अरे थोड़ा आ जाओ मेरे टेंट में राम शाम अल्फा कौन कौन का घर है इंटेलिजेंस एक उठते ही नहीं वाज टू डू मच साइज बिकॉज़ आई वाज आउट विद आई हैव रिपोर्टेड फर्स्ट 5 डेज विद द आर्मी टाइम इज ऑफ द थैंक ब्रिगेडियर दीपक भानो सर मैं अब जाता हूं गुवाहाटी वापस जाकर स्टोरी करूंगा 3 डेज हाउ द आर्मी इज ओके टाइम इज ऑफ फोन का डिब्रूगढ़ डिस्ट्रिक्ट कमांडर अल्फा सो रोक दो वाइटे आई आर सो ओ दादा ओमो कोमो गए तोलो अच्छा मानु जन ऊल This commander quietly said, "Hong Kong, no, no, no. Jiman speedo to Leslie, Jiman speedo to my boy. Who is it? So with all this, visa covers are what? Next four days, I go around with the alpha. The actual alpha units, which are how they are turning this political campaign to Kenya. So I say, 'Gaon mano koi ki koi as. Who take any of it? And then I write that story also. So I see it from both sides of the picture. Nobody tries this. But this must be done. This must be done." at the peak of the bhutan operation i was speaking almost every day to the bhutanese army chief general gongklong dorji the brigadier the chief of the red ants division general gagan ji singh and with parash bhu and he was telling me hey man selling korea se amar mai ke man sai ke man ye sab virat dikta i said okay you have to take care because selling jeta korea se close kora to ali army sage mai ke man de ke fire na kor kintu durar par motor aise everyone Because these alpha guys, like typical Gaon Buddhas, they have taken the whole families. Do we not? I got my police brought clearly. Question: They attack to IS. Now how about that? Now these look at these people. They are supposed to be fighting the Indian state. Look at Pravakar. March, March before, at the time he was friendly with India. He had made alternate arrangements. He had a day in Ayyappa for India. Look at our country. Bhutan look at Bhat. My question: They attack to IS. No, how about you? Bhutan or other side are going here. You know, in Bhutan the king has to marry all the sisters. If they marry you, then all your sisters are killed. So he has four kids. But side are going here for the palace to ride in. Side are going here like a tree of course. But see, it will move on. Come to Bhutan, go back. Be serious. Can you tell me about your own competence? Remove them. Because he calls me, we speak a long time. He didn't listen to my advice. Yet he is firing to start. He said, "Ada, we are doing that. Any problem? See, I said, 'Okay, sir.'" तुम जो बंदोबस्त कर ये जो औरत बच्चे इनको किस कैंप पे रिमूव करेंगे उस कैंप का ग्रेट रेफरेंस मिलेगा तो हम उस कैंप में शेलिंग बंद कर देंगे चार घंटा के लिए और कोई हेरा फेरी किया तो फुल असॉल्ट होगा उन्हें हेरा फेरी नहीं होगा मैं आपको एश्योर करता हूं बट इफ यू हैव टू प्रोटेक्ट द राउंड कॉर्नर अदरवाइज एंड आई टोल्ड गगन जी से आई एम गोइंग टू गेट द रेड क्रॉस इन फ्रंट ओ ए रेड क्रॉस रेड क्रॉस गोरो को इसमें मत लाओ समझ गए वी रिस्पेक्ट द यू नो वी वी अंडरस्टैंड दैट वी आर इन द बिजनेस ऑफ फाइटिंग द अल्फा हमारे ही बच्चे लोग हैं लड़ाई उनसे होगा बट औरत बच्चे 
So, if you realize, all their women and children came out alive. How? Mara said, Dada Devatham too. Amuk camp, A grid number. I communicated to Gavanji. Sir, as I said. So, Devatham too, Kaur Lava Lava, he is a quiet. Amuk grid, Thom grid, no soft covers. Satellite also. So, in front of me. So, okay. I said, I have 4 hours, 6 hours time. Because there are children, there are babies, there are children, there are children, there are children. After 6 hours, we'll instruct the Bhutanese army because they were conducting a mission. To go to that camp, pick on all the women, children, and all the that. And then they'll come back. Okay, I'll go to the Arsam border and add them over to Assam police. Okay, it went clockwork. Okay, I'll go to the Arsam border and add them over to Assam police. Okay, I'll go to the Arsam border and add them over to Assam police. Okay, I'll go to the Arsam border and add them over to Assam police. Okay, I'll go to the Arsam border and add them over to Assam police. Okay, I'll go to the Arsam border and add them over to Assam police. Okay, I'll go to the Arsam border and add them over to Assam police. Okay, I'll go to the Arsam border and add them over to Assam police. Okay, I'll go to the Arsam border and add them over to Assam police. Okay, I'll go to the Arsam border and add them over to Assam police. Okay, I'll मोरी वैसे बोले कोई से ही लग कोई जो मारे डीसी उठाए मैंने इंग्लिश वाला ऑप्शन तो बहुत फोकल देर वाइफ्स आर सीटिंग ऑन हंगर स्ट्राइक सम टाइम हाउ आर देर लाइफ देर लाइफ बिकॉज़ ऑफ़ दिस एज इज़ आगे टू एज़ आगे प्राप्त एट यू एंजॉय द क्रेडिबिलिटी वेयर द सीनियर कमांडर ऑफ़ द इंडियन आर्मी इसे नोकनी पड़ी कहाँ? डिबोल लगे, सब चार्ली से के डिबोल। और एक पड़ी कहाँ पे डिबोल नॉइले चार्ली स्वर्ग में दौड़ कर ना है। एंड यू नीड टू बी एब्सोल्युटली शियोर व्हाट व्हाट यू आर रिपोर्टिंग। इन द नेम ऑफ़ एस कू, यू कम आउट विथ स्टूपिड इनफॉरमेशन एंड यू कंफ्यूज पीपल। one UNI correspondent put out a story that Laksham, one of the big towns adjoining Tripura, has been liberated by Mukti Force. So all these refugees who were in the camp started running towards Laksham. The Pakistanis are still in control of Laksham. When these Bengali refugees from Tripura camps, they crossed the border and they tried to enter Laksham, the Pakistanis opened out with machine guns. 700 people were killed. And it's all because of this child. That we in the media are seen as Force multipliers. Do you understand what is a force multiplier? Anybody in among the students? Force multiplier, very simply put, is something that adds force and strength to your own self. And how do you use the media as a force multiplier? Example number one. An army intelligence officer comes to me. I'm a credible journalist. He convinces me with evidence, so-called evidence, that Paresh Gurwa is involved in drug trafficking from Burma. I put out this story. What then happens is, people say, Ashwir Bhama ke liye se, take it to Paresh Abhi ni, or in Alpha Lover Bhal, take it liye se, tab na, Asai Alpha Ibla Karwar ko ya se. So if 60 people in Asai were supporting Paresh Gurwa, his support will go down by at least 20%. Some people may not believe it, no way, no way to any. Some people definitely will believe it will be going to be So what happens? His strength goes down by 20% in real terms. Because in insurgency, in counterinsurgency, in this kind of a little war situation, where undergrounds are challenging the state, it's not a fight between two countries. In this kind of a situation, it's not a battle of guns. At the end of the day, it's a battle of hearts and minds. And in this battle of hearts and minds, whoever commands the allegiance and the support of the population, and I would recall Mao Zedong, where it said that the guerrilla is fish, people are water. If you lose the water, the fish will do this and conk off. So the whole business is to deprive the fish of the water. How do you do that? You plant a story like this. This is how you turn the media into your force multiplier. And the insurgents could do the same thing. If the army has raped one woman, if they can get to put the story that the army in the last 16 days has actually raped 59 Assamese women, a lot of Assamese officers and soldiers serving in the Indian army will actually begin to have second thoughts about the army. And I'll give you the example of neighboring Bangladesh. When in, on the night of 25th March 1971, the big Pakistani general Yahya Khan and his 
man in East Pakistan, Tikka Khan, when they ordered the crackdown, they told their commanders, Bangali log bhoog dar bhoog hai. Ek lakh maar do, saale saal agitation band ho jayega. Ek lakh kyon? Pachis lakh maara. Nahi agitation band ho, mulit bhi chala gaya. But the thing is, when they ordered this crackdown, and the Pakistan army just went killing people all over the place. They entered the university. They killed everybody they found. They raped all the Bengali women and carried them back to the thing. What then happened was, immediately the Bengali officers and soldiers in the Pakistan army, they revolted. And later General Zia, at that time Major Zia, he led one battalion. I don't really need the mic, so don't worry. Everyone help me here. So General Zia, he led his East Pakistan, you know, East Bengal regiment soldiers. They fought against the Pakistanis and they slowly retreated into Tripura to a border town called Shabron. After 10 days of fighting, no food, these boys, they were absolute sort of at the end of, they had not slept for more than an hour. As they came retreating out of Bangladesh into Indian territory, because he had said, now that India is have another shop more here. We don't have the strength, we don't have the ammunition. Guli ne na. Akhe jhon mano mene haja na jhon or kima. Therefore, do ishko round ammunition as a constant Pakistani to encounter with us. So before we run out of our ammunition, we have to hit Indian territory. Then maybe we get some support. So when they came into a small town called Shabrun, my father-in-law was then the DYSP of Tripura Police there. He received them. And General Zia, later General, at that time Major Zia said, and rice was managed. And there is one seller, rice seller, one Shah fellow. He still says, Jiyar Shahibar ka siya, mi agano ti rishta ka pai. Hey, Saul told this. What I'm trying to say is, that moment they started random rape of Bengali women and children, the Bengali soldiers of the army revolted. And they went to form the nucleus of the Mukti Forge. The rest of the people in Bangladesh, Army League was leading the education, but Army League is like, Congress, they were not a party of revolution, a communist party which had trained people. They are basically what? They were agitation, street agitation, mukti chai, umuk chai, tomuk chai. But is this Bengali soldiers of the East Bengal Regiment and the East Bengal, East Pakistan, East Pakistan Rifles, which later became BDR Bangladesh Rifles, they formed the nucleus, it's around them that other Kheti Gora Manu students, they came and the guerrilla force was built up. Now, if Oresh Borwa threw all his interesting friends in the overground, including human rights, can get this story into the media, BSSK Akhomiya media, which is the real battleground, even when someone like General Tony Bordoloi, I had an exchange with him this morning, he's the first general, SMS general in the Indian Army, Major General. Tony. If Tony Bordole reads that copy, he will have second thoughts about staying in the Indian Army, believe me. Now that is how the media space becomes so important. Because insurgency and counterinsurgency at the end of the day is not a battle of guns, it's not about tactical positions, it's not about tank movements. It's all about the battle of hearts and minds. And to win that battle of hearts and minds, both sides are rather all the sides in the conflict actually need media space, actually need to control the media space, which is why you would have heard of this phenomena called embedded journalism. That journalists are accompanying American troops in Iraq. What are they reporting? They're only reporting the American side of the story. So, this whole phenomenon in conflict, you need to be aware that the media space becomes one of the most contested space. And everyone involved in the conflict wants to get the story their own way. And that's where you really, 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 really need to make a very critical professional effort to balance the whole scene. It's easier said than done, but it's nevertheless a key professional task which has to be attempted, which has that's a battle we all have to fight and we have to win it. Soldiers are fighting their own battles to win them. Undergrounds and insurgents are fighting their own battle. We, in the media, will have to fight our own battle to ensure
that we don't become victims of psyops. You know what is psyops? Psychological operations. The Indian Army actually has a cell. I have a card. Major Manoj Kumar Singh, Staff Officer 1, Psyops Division, Indian Military Intelligence Headquarters. He got his card. He says this in his card that he is doing psyops. What is psyops? Planting lies about your opponent, defaming him, discrediting him, so that he loses public support. And the, and the insurgents do the same thing. Because at the end of the day, the insurgents replicate the state. The Indian Army has a colonel, so Paresh Burwar needs to be colonel because his army is not big enough. And the Nagas have a bigger army, so their chief of army staff is a major general, a major general VSR 10. They exactly replicate the state and they do the same thing. They're trying to win you over to their cause. They're trying to use you as their public relations officer. They're trying to deprive you of your independence, your impartiality, your sense of balance. And what they're trying to do is, in the process, win the battle of hearts and minds in which you are their most important weapon. And what is your task? You need to be aware of this, number one. You need to have a strategy to fight that out because you need to speak to these guys anyway. You can't sort of afford to overlook them because you're reporting the conflict and they're important actors in the drama. But you really need to have sources and a professional technique by which you can actually find the truth and balance it, and balance your whole story. So in this whole business of psyops and force multipliers, you need to be acutely aware of who you are. You need to rise above the identity barrier, as I said first. You need to have a diverse variety of sources. You need to have complete, clear, idea of your agenda, which should be a media agenda rather than a political or a military agenda. You need to be first with the news, but you need to be absolutely sure about what you're writing. So it's important to be first, but it's more important to get it right. Otherwise, it could lead to the death of people. And last but not the least, you need to develop a professional capability and a technology. Technology, I'm not meaning you know, all these gadgets, but a, a sort of professional technology so that you are not used. These are the key important arguments that I have sought to make in my presentation today when I discuss media and conflict. And as I have given you old North Indian experience, I can give you more and more experience. But before I finish, I would like to say one small thing is that because I am trying to bring my 32 years experience as a journalist into this whole process of doing this new paper. I'm looking for different kinds of talent. I've got very senior people. Believe me, I've not got a single guy from Delhi, Calcutta or Bombay. It's all our boys, senior people. Last few years, even in media, a lot of our boys have gone. I've just brought them back. All our senior positions are manned by people, including Shubhir Vodwa's daughter, Shongamitra, or Jimli who is a dear sister of mine. She's come back from Hindustan Times. So entire top layer of our organization are people who are from the region, especially Assam, but who have operated in a nationally competitive media environment and who will produce something better than what local papers are capable of. We have recruited quite a lot of youngsters here who can be molded. What we have avoided is, we have avoided recruiting people, you know, who are senior in the profession here, but who have a reputation of being extortionists, who have a reputation of being very biased people, who have, we have consciously avoided them. So we have recruited very good journalists from this region, but who have operated in a national environment. We have recruited some youngsters. I would like to actually work with this institute in the area of media research, because that's something. Essentially, my interest was in ethnicity, insurgency and that kind of subject. My PhD is called Insurgency and Diplomacy in Postcolonial South Asia. It's an Oxford PhD which later came out as a book called The Insurgent Crossfire. I've subsequently done another book on the Northeast standalone. But belatedly I've got into media research and one of the recent books I've edited is called Counter Gaze Media, Migrants, Minorities. It's uh, basically a European Academy project where five Indian media researchers 
or rather researchers, me, I was a media researcher, one other media researcher, were sent to Europe to study you know, the minority situation. And I studied the media and the minority situation in Germany. And there were five scholars, Europeans, who were sent to India. And then, that's why the book is called Counter Gaze. This was a gaze against each other. And I was finally asked by the European Academy to edit that book. I should have actually brought a copy and donated it to this organization. I'll do it at some point of time. It's called Counter Gaze Media Migrants Minorities. So belatedly in the last few years, I have got into a little bit of media research. And with the little experience of that I have, I'd be very happy to share my experience and develop some definite media research program in this region, the support for which may be provided by my newspaper, because we plan to have a newspaper which will be very research oriented. I'll thank everybody, I'll thank the organizers, I'll thank the people who are connected with this institute, and I'll thank my young friends. We hope to interact more in the future. Thank you.